opened wide as she vomited black smug into Father Gabriel's face. After we all right, dang, bro, like, what is this, like, bro, please, chat, if you guys, bro, subscribe and share to your friends and tell them to share to their friends and everyone just come and watch you. Let's get, like, 50 people in a live, bro. I'm broke. Look at my headset. Leave her, you unclean spit. We are two seconds into the video and I got scared, bro. I hope y'all y'all don't think I'm faking this, bro. This is real. Spirit, I condemn you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Leave and go back to hell. I was standing in horror as I watched Father Gabriel perform an exorcism on my wife, Emily. She was screaming and laughing and behaving like a creature from another world. A world where humans don't tread. Her body moved and bent in a horrifying way, and there was God nothing I could do to make it all right. She jumped on the bed, sitting like a frog, and said in a demonic voice, You really love her, don't you, David? But does she love you? I don't think so. Because she did enjoy sleeping with your brother when you were out of town. <laughs> Shut up! You're lying! You're not my Emily! Leave her body, vermin! Whatever was inside my wife made her look horrifying. Her pupils were small like black dots surfing in a pool of blood. There were deep scratches all over her pretty face. A foul smell came from her bony body that hadn't eaten for at least a week. No doubt, it is the evil that is keeping her alive. She smiled with her filthy teeth staring at me and said, There's nothing you can do to save her now. Father Gabriel sprinkled holy water on her while screaming his prayer once again, and Emily lashed out making another demonic scream. Every inch of her skin that came in contact with the holy water started to burn to release smoke. She screamed and screamed, and I prayed to God to make this over. I blame myself for what is happening to my dear wife. If not, I bought her that evil Dybbuk box from the garage sale. Everything would have been normal in our life. I couldn't help but get lost in thoughts of those cheerful memories. Even a month back, we were living the life of our dreams until fate changed it all to a nightmare. Emily and I came to this small town hoping for a fresh start. We bought a small house and honestly, to cut the costs, we bought secondhand furniture to decorate the house. In a small town like this, it wasn't hard to find reusable stuff. One day, we were coming home after buying a beautiful set of wine glasses at a very low price when we saw a garage sale going on in our house next door. We hadn't met our neighbors yet, so we thought it would be a better idea to check out the sale and also socialize a bit. A few people were gathering around the front yard of the house. An old man was sitting on a chair and selling various items. We walked close to him and he looked at us with scanning eyes. Everyone else was also staring at us and I whispered to Emily, <laughs> Welcome to the neighborhood. She laughed at my joke and started to go through the stuff that was on sale. Wooden chairs, coffee tables, kitchen utensils, dinner sets, mirrors, even dressers were in that collection. Okay, these are nice. These it are felt nice. like someone decided to get rid of all the things they had and run away. Some of the things seemed strikingly new. Emily bought a bunch of clothes and got busy on her shopping spree. I couldn't hold back my curiosity and asked the man, This is a lot of stuff. So you all are shifting elsewhere, it seems? The old man gave me a blank stare and said, I am just the caretaker of this house. The family who lived here faced a tragic incident. The wife committed suicide after a long-term illness and the husband left the next day, leaving all this stuff. Before the new tenants come, <laughs> I have to get rid of these. He spoke in an annoyed tone like he really wants to get done with these leftovers. I had no idea our neighbor next door went through such a traumatic phase. I was going to ask the man what exactly happened to that wife when I heard Emily's voice. Oh, wow, this is such a pretty jewelry box. I turned towards her and saw she was holding a small wooden box with an intricate design on its lid. It seemed quite expensive to me because I have seen boxes like this in many antique shops that were worth a lot of money. Oh. At the old man and said, how much is it? He said in a hesitant voice, Um, uh, you really want that? Emily nodded her head, yes. He looked at the box and said, uh, Pay whatever you want. I got a bit suspicious because I expected him to ask a fixed rate for such a crafted piece. 
Emily said, We will give you $10. And surprising me, the man accepted the deal right away. Emily bought some clothes and jewelry too. We came home and I couldn't shake off the feeling why that man gave us this antique box at such a low cost. Emily rushed to the bedroom and sat down in front of the mirror. I know now she will put all her jewelry inside that box and pretend like she is a royal queen. I liked this little joy of her in every little thing. But as she tried to open the box, we found the real catch. No matter how hard we tried or how much strength we put in, we couldn't open it. What an idiot I am. I should have checked it before buying. Now I understand why the old man agreed to sell it at $10. Damn it. We can use a knife to try to pry it. No, that'll ruin the craftsmanship. Let it be. I will think of some other ways to open it. Saying this, Emily kept the box on her dressing table and we got busy with our chores. Time went by and I started noticing changes in Emily's behavior. She used to wake up in the middle of the night and sit in front of the mirror, staring at the box. It was like she went into a trance. It got me worried because she stopped talking much. Her entire attention revolved around that box. One afternoon, I came home from work to pick up an important file. I walked straight into the bedroom in a hurry and I saw Emily sitting on the bed and eating something from the box. The lid was surprisingly open. Oh, so you finally opened the box. Saying this, I was about to step close to her when she turned back. I could see her mouth smeared in blood and her eyes were all white. She giggled and fainted on the floor. The box fell on the floor from her hand and I found some pretty bizarre stuff inside. There were dried fingernails, blood-filled leeches, strands of dirty hair, and a creepy doll, more like a human figurine made with tattered clothes. There were pins sticking in it. It made me vomit, realizing my wife was eating those leeches, God knows, filled with whose blood. And that was the beginning of this nightmare. When the doctors couldn't help us anymore, I turned towards God. The priest of the local church, Father Gabriel, came to my house and told me that a demonic spirit had latched itself onto my wife. The box wasn't just some pretty jewelry box. In fact, it was a Dybbuk box used in some ritualistic sacrifice. Whatever was inside that box, my wife set it free and now it wants her soul. Father Gabriel suggested the only way out of this was the exorcism and that's why we are giving one last try. I don't want to end up like our next door neighbor. Now I know the kind wife must have faced the same fate towards which Emily is going. Emily screamed as Father Gabriel went on with his chanting. Our entire house started to shake, but the exorcism can't be stopped. Emily started biting herself vigorously. It was horrifying to watch my jolly, sweet wife tearing off her own flesh like a hungry wolf. I couldn't stand... Love her, right? You have watched her smile. Now, you'll watch her die. I will eat her heart. <laughs> Father Gabriel sprinkled the holy water once again and said, Give me your name. No, I won't. Give me your name, evil. The more Father Gabriel asked the spirit to give its identity, the more it hurt Emily. Please, Father. It'll kill her. Please do something. I cried with my last hope. What Father Gabriel did next shocked the hell out of me. He jumped on the bed, grabbed Emily by her shoulder, and screamed. You need one soul, evil. You take mine. Let this poor child go. You let her go. Just then, Emily's mouth opened wide as she vomited black smug into Father Gabriel's face. After releasing it all, Emily's unconscious body fell on the bed, and I saw Father Gabriel's eyes turning around, revealing the white part, just like it happened to Emily. I condemn you back to hell! And stabbed himself in the stomach again and again until his lifeless body fell on the floor. The fact that Father Gabriel sacrificed his own life to save my wife will always be a painful fact to me. 
Now we have no other run away before anyone else finds Father Gabriel dead in our house. I know the cops will never believe us. I can't risk our life once again, as it will be a complete waste of Father Gabriel's huge sacrifice. I burnt the box before leaving the house. Emily is still lying unconscious in the back seat of my car. God knows what's waiting for us now. No! <laughs>